How do guys, it's Luke at Geek Gaming Scenix and in this video, let's let's shrink his favourite war game. I'll catch you after this. So this year, well last year and this year, I don't think much is gonna happen in the ways of wargaming. Um Club Shot, I, I used to be able to play, you know, a couple of times a week, whether it'll be at a friend's house, whether it be at the club, or whether it be going to events like every, I used to go every two or three months to an event and play Kings of War or something. And the what's put me off actually having a game last year and this year at home or even at work is the fact that I don't own any terrain and to actually sit down and play my favorite games is a sheer commitment that i will have to commit to and i just i want i don't have the time and since moving here my house is back to normal i've got a home i don't have i don't have a games room or anything anymore i've just got an office um so i don't have the space at home but i could play here but with lockdown there's only me and the lads so what i thought i'd do is i'd take my favorite games and we'll shrink them still have the same amount of fun it's not as big a commitment because everything's smaller and it's a lot cheaper i'll see you at the end of the video so I'm going to be 3D printing my 10mm models. Now, I was going to purchase them, as in buy actual metal cast models from popular companies around the UK, but I found a load of files on Thingiverse that was 10mm scale. I did try 15mm by upscaling them, but they didn't fit on the bases right for Kings of War, so I downscaled the models to 10mm, but kept everything half size. This meant I could get a good number of models on the bases. Now, with these models being free, I wasn't expecting much, but I was rather shocked by the quality and comparing them to some of the metal models that are out on the market, they were pretty close and they'd not cost me anything. And because I could just print them off, I thought, right, let's give this a go. Let's try 10 millimeter Kings of War because it's my favorite game. I want a game. So I printed off the models and I started painting them and what was good is while I was painting a horde or a couple of units, I was printing off the next lot of models. A bed of models which could be two hordes, a good few regiments, printed off in around an hour. And I was quite happy with the quality to say there was free STLs online. Now I don't paint them to a great standard at this moment because what I do is I, I base them first. And I thought, what's the point of painting a load of models that you can hardly see anyway? Till the based, and I'll just I'll just paint the first rank. So I based them on one mil plastic. The one thing I don't like about even Kings of War is three mil and six mil bases what people use. They tend to stand off the uh, the table quite a lot, and I, I really don't like it. One mil plastic isn't something I would recommend, but for ten mil, it works really well because it's only a small surface area. And the models themselves are on strips, which reinforces the 1mm plastic. So it keeps them really light and really close to the table, which, which I liked. And then I just spray paint them black. And then <laughs> this is the first problem I got to. I like, how am I going to base them? And I thought I'd try my base ready range because people in the uh, Warmaster community have been asking whether it works well for 10mm with it being a lot smaller. And the answer to that is yes, it's just you have to sieve it out first because there is some coarser aggregates in there that will be a bit big for the scale. Now I do use some of the smaller bits of aggregate and I drop them in just for some large stones even though they're probably less than a mil each. Um, but that just helps for a tiny bit of texture. Now how I tried basing them was I actually based each individual strip itself first by just putting some fast dry basing glue around the feet and then dipping them into the mix. So I wouldn't have to paint around the feet once they're all based up, because there's gonna be quite a lot of models on a regiment, never mind a horde or even a legion. Um, so I just did this across all the models' bases' feet before moving on to sticking them to the base. One thing I was doing while I was dipping them is just making sure the bottom of the base was clear so they wasn't gonna lift up too much when it came to super gluing them to the plastic bases. And here you'll see why we went for 10 mil and why 10 mil is a lot better than 15 mil. Playing Kings of War, you can get 
eight models in a line on a regiment at half size. So even though we are halfing it down to 15 mil scale, inverted commas, we can still use 10 millimeter models and get plenty on a base so it looks pretty packed. After doing this and seeing this all ranked up, I got a bit excited and it made me want to do normal size Kings of War, but use 10 millimeter scale models and terrain. So then it'd look like total war. And to be fair, if I do do that, I will document it. And what I might do is make the middle ranks actually come out off the multi bases so I can play it small scale or full scale at 10 mil. Uh, but let me know if you want to see that. Now, I'd got this army done in a day, so what I thought I'd do is I'd start printing off my brother's army, which was Wood Elves. Now, these are from Forest Dragon. Um, I paid for these, I think it was about £60 for every unit, so I can just print as many as I want when I want. And the quality of these was really high. I wasn't expecting much after seeing the last ones, which were still pretty reasonable because they were free, and I was I was quite happy with the free models, but these ones were such a leap above the quality i was really happy that i paid for them and from that it's actually spurred me on a on a quest to find more sdls of this sort of standard uh, because they are lovely and when you see them i'm sure you'll be pretty shocked at the quality to say i've printed them on a home printer and they're only 10 millimeter in height and I painted these up exactly the same. I feel quite bad for painting these that this way uh, because with them being a bit more heroic and a bit more overscaled and a bit chubbier, uh, the details there, these could quite easily be painted with some uh, plus four readers on. But I just chuck the base coats on, chuck some washers on and give a few of them just a basic highlight that you can see. Now, once they're all ranked up and stuck on the bases, this is where I go to paint just the front ranks or what you can see slightly better. Because they're all ranked up, there's no point painting the models that you can't see. So it's a very much paint what you can see. So I'll just edge eye like the weapons and the faces and the hands and just make it so even if you're a good few feet from the table, they just jump out a little bit more. And I got two armies painted and printed in two days, which is mental. If I was to spend two days doing like a hard unit for Kings of War, which is only one unit, I got the same amount of accomplishment from painting one army in a day than I did building a gorgeous looking single unit. And it really scratched an itch and it really cheered me up. And if anything, that's one reason why I got really excited about this. Now enough about the models. Let's get on to building a board because I don't have any terrain and I want to just throw something quick together um, So I, it was lightweight small and I could throw it in a box now. Don't do what I do Don't think oh foam board. That's nice and light We'll just cut that into two by one at uh, two by one strips and then we'll you know paint it brown chuck some base ready on it And away we go. No this stuff it, it warps really badly and I thought bit time I've stuck this down to some card or some wood it's not going to be lightweight or it's not going to be as thin so it's going to be a bugger to store so I just cut a piece of 5mm MDF and chuck some brown paint on it and that was far better the only thing I did do with this is when I put the glue down and I started saturating it I did clamp the edges uh, but that was just as a safety precaution now for the main ground covering I'm just going to go for the same base ready that I used for the miniatures and I've, I've sieved it and I only used, well, less than two bags for basing the miniatures and doing this table. Um, so what I did was I just chucked it, sieved it on. I did put a couple of bigger stones on there and then I chucked the matte scenic spray all over it to absolutely saturate it. Once that had dried overnight, I came in the next day and I just put some autumn static grass in patches. This base ready is called Patchy Plains, but because we'd applied it by hand, there wasn't like areas of patches. With it being on a larger, greater area, it wasn't as patchy as I wanted. So I went in and physically added the patches myself. Now you could just sprinkle this by hand with it only been two mil static, but using the applicator does give you a far better finish. So if you have got one, use the applicator, but it's not an essential. And then over up all the excess so you're not having any fallen grass or loose grass where you don't want it. Um, because what you'll see is once you've overed it, you might actually over up some grass that's not completely stuck down and it'll leave patches, which is fine. Um, because what I want to do is add a bit more of the ground covering in areas just to make it into a patchy plain. And all you do is just sprinkle that on while it's dry, cover up them glue spaces. 
and then just seal it all down again with a matte scenic sealant and then that should be pretty rock solid the next day. And for the people wanting to know how many bags of grass and base redders I used, I used less than two bags of base ready and half a bag of two mil autumn static grass. Now for Kings of War I'm going for the absolute basic terrain pack uh, which you'd play at a tournament which is two hills, two woods, a wall or two and a piece of impassable. Uh, I just thought I'll do that because I can do that in a, literally a couple of hours and how I achieve that is for the hills I just use a, a few pieces of foam board um, just cut to shape and stick them together with super glue just to make it so it dries quick. And then for a base, I put these on cardboard because I don't want them to warp like they did when I just painted them, even though circles are stronger. I just use a nice hard slash cardboard base uh, and just super glue them to that and bevel that edge. And then once I've stuck all that down, I just chuck on some uh, modeling compound, which will make them like solid concrete discs. And this dries very quickly. Once you've got it on, leave it 10, 15 minutes to start firming up. And once that's firmed up, you can smooth it out and get it to a nice flat finish. And then after that, another 10 minutes or so, and then you're ready for chucking some paint on. Um, so I actually got all this terrain done in one fell swoop, which is the, the whole point of this system. Once I've put the paint on though, I thought it'd be a good idea to actually do the basing in reverse just because I didn't want to wait an entire day and then to come back to put static grass on. So I thought I'll put the static grass on first and then I'll spray seal the static grass with the sealant spray and just chuck the patchy planes on over the top of it and then seal that again with a repeat spray, a scenic spray. And uh, yeah, just left them to dry and it was more or less the same finish. So I should have done that in the first place rather than leaving it to dry. So for anybody wants to emulate this, that's how you do it. Now I've been naughty. Um, I bought these from Crippling God Foundry and uh, I printed them off. I could have made some bog brush trees and everything else, but it was just so simple just to throw them together. And with me making like a little box board game, I can just throw them in a box, I don't have to worry about them. I printed off in a couple of hours and I just literally stuck them together and chucked a couple of base coats and a wash on. And for a little board game, I'm quite happy with them because I literally can just store them in the box. I don't have to look after them. And I did this with, with the rest of the terrain. I just 3D printed a ruined church. All the links to all the models and everything that I've 3D printed will be below. Um, but I just thought for how small they are, they'll print in no time. I'll chuck a couple of things on it and it's just a nice little box game ready to go with plastic terrain, the models are done, everything's painted and it's took me a couple of days to do the lot and yeah, I, I can't knock it. Would you do what I've done or would you do it slightly different? Let me know in the comments below guys. But me thinking about playing Kings of War during Covid has really put me off and it's the fact that I'd have to build a 6x4 gaming table, full size hills, full size woods, even just to a basic standard, it's a lot of work. In the time it'd probably take me to paint one unit for Kings of War, I've done the board, I've done two whole armies and the terrain. Yeah it's not amazing, yeah it's not great, but I can have a few, a few beers after work and sit and play this on a coffee table with my brother. Or even try and replicate the old MB pictures from the back of the board games. Do you remember them? <laughs> so guys, I really like this. One main reason is if you get talking to a mate who likes the idea, you can literally show them on a small setup like that. If they like it, they can make the choice whether they want to go full size or the small size and just play with your close-knit community of friends. Because the smaller scale and the smaller boards, it's not as much of a commitment to a new player. I must admit, when I first got into the hobby, it was a big task to think, wow, I've got, I've got so much to buy, I've got so much to build, I've got so much to do. And it's because everybody's a lot further more advanced into gaming, everybody wants to play big games. Whereas when you're starting out just a few a few hundred point game is all you want and you want to break yourself in. But playing at 10 millimeter and half in the size of the board, half in the size of the movement rules and everything else, scale everything down by half, it makes it a lot more accessible to newer players. And I just like the fact that I've got, a bo I've got I'll put this in a box and it'll just live like that. And if I want to add an army to it, What's it going to take me? Day or two? 
just to add another army. And if a, a new mate comes and gets into it, I might even give him one of my old armies just to get into it. Because at the end of the day, I could just print off and paint another one similar. Or, you know, I just it's just so much, so much easier and a lot more accessible for new players. And for me, who hasn't got this space at home now, I mean, I play at work. But if I want to play at home, I can just pop it on a coffee table and have a few drinks when lockdown allows. But anyway, guys, what do you think? Would you like me to see me do this with other game systems? I'd love to do this for 40k. If you'd like to see me do that, pop it below. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to show support to the channel, buy my products. All right, guys, you don't have to buy them just from us. There's shops all over the UK. We've got shops in Australia, America, Europe. Wherever you want to go, the links below will tell you where to buy them from and uh, use your local shops and support them as well because if you buy it from them, it's still supporting me. All right, guys, so thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And let's start playing smaller war games. That's, it's just better. See it in a bit. So since lockdown and all that, I've not been able to have a game of Kings of War, like at the club and everything. Oh, so noisy. I'm not going to get out done today, I can tell already. <laughs>